Councillor Sutters. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think I've probably lost my way now. Um, but I would like to say that I, I do disagree with uh, Councillor Carpenter on a number of issues. Firstly, on whether the leader is in the room, and secondly, on whether the lack of housing, in particular social housing, is in fact a modern day phenomena. We've always had unmet demand, we always will have, and it's every generational challenge to try to get over that. In 1919, when the Liberal Government's Housing and Town Planning Act first brought forward an initiative that kick-started what has, we had now come to know as the social rented sector, it was very controversial. Local authorities were tasked for the first time with building low-rent housing using government subsidy, which would cover any loss beyond half a penny, which could be recuperated from a local rate. And I think we'd all like to think that could be done again. The result that was that over the next three years, the state financed over 200,000 new houses for workers, and it was a pride to be, to be settled into one of them. Since that time, local authorities have been at the forefront of delivery of social rented housing with statutory duties to match. And I think we've done pretty well in Wandsworth, where we remain the majority landlord. We still fall far short of the demand because we have a burgeoning population. But lack, and lack of access will always be a problem, particularly now as a household needs to earn approximately £50,000 to be able to afford a median market rent. It's clearly beyond the scope of many, and I agree with Councillor Hogg, if I was to be moving to Wandsworth today, I would not be able to afford my own house. I've also got two children who will want to remain in Wandsworth, and they too will struggle to find housing. But that is our challenge, and that is what we're here to do. The Council has taken many steps to boost its, its affordable housing. We're now quite dominant in the private rental sector and use this to maximum effect to boost supply for those in the greatest need. Of course, this has an adverse effect that it does restrict units on the open market. But that is how it has to be. If we're not careful, I also agree that the same pattern of settlement and flight that we've seen in more affluent boroughs around ones with, such as RBKC will, will come to us and we will have an over-dominance on residents at either end of the social spectrum. I don't want to see that happen. I don't think anybody on our side of the house does. I don't think anybody on your side does. But there are other problems too, other challenges that we face. One of those is that for units growth, we are heavily dominant uh, reliant upon the private sector partners, notably developers and housing associations, to bring forward a high proportion of our new social rent and intermediate stock. Opposition colleagues often call for a greater proportion of social rent in new build schemes, and this is what Councillor Carpenter was calling for a minute ago. But if he bothered to study the viability assessments that come forward, he would realise that many of them couldn't afford any further financial burden. It is now well reported in the press that the balance sheets of many of our major developers are artificially depressed by the financial burden of carrying, in particular, intermediate housing stock. And so we have to look to housing associations who have a major part to play. And we do have a government assurance that the 1.8 billion affordable housing programme will continue past 2015. But it's not without its problems. Many of the associations are unconvinced of the long-term viability of the current model because although it allows landlords to charge rents in excess of 80% of market rates, they are then expected to use those increased rental incomes to attract private finance and further develop new social housing. We can only hope that in the interim to 2015, a more stable and acceptable model comes forward. In the meantime, we in Wandsworth are tasked with striking a balance between housing needs, value for money, and the mixed community objectives we would all like to see thrive. I believe that the initiatives the Council has announced during this term have offered them a widening array of tools designed just to do just that. The broad structure is there, but it is those subtle adjustments that are going to get more people into homes. Councillor Tom outlined them all for you. There's no need for me to go through them again. We, we've got first-time buyer deposits that we're hoping to, to, to give up to £50,000. Right to buy will be coming back and the innovative use of right to buy sale receipts to fund the first-time buyer's interest-free loan scheme. A review of social housing allocation policies is bringing through some really good ideas and I, for one, applaud our officers 
and, and the council for what they are doing to help in a very, very difficult market. Thank you. Thank you, councillors, such as Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you very much, um, Madam Mayor. This is quite an interesting um, debate, and different people seem to be focusing on different aspects of housing. Um, in particular, one of the issues that keeps coming up in different speeches is that of availability, and Councillor Sutters um, was referring to that. But of course, when we talk about availability, is that really the, the final arbiter of where we are with the housing market? And it probably isn't. To me, there are three aspects that always need to be borne in mind. One of them is affordability, which Councillor Sutters and others have referred to. Another one is mobility, which we haven't really talked about a great deal. And the other aspect that I think is most important to people is good repair. Now, am I talking just about social rented? No, I'm not. I'm not just talking about uh, public renting. I'm not just talking about private renting. I'm not even talking about private ownership, in, or indeed uh, intermediate or shared ownership. Affordability, mobility and good repair apply to any sector of housing. And we're in a very difficult situation as it stands at the moment because we don't have really very much of any of them in any sector at all. We certainly don't have affordability in the private ownership market, certainly not in this borough, certainly not across most of London now. And of course that is linked to supply. What are we doing about supply? Not enough. There are a lot of uh, private um, developers who have land banked and are just sitting on land banks. And actually, if anything's depressing their balance sheets, it's nothing to do with intermediate housing. It's to do with all the uh, land banks that they're, they're just sitting on. Uh, and the national uh, p planning policy framework um, is not what's needed to, to kickstart the housing market. It's, it's actually getting them to, to, to have the funding to develop them. So it comes back to, to funding supply. Affordability in the private sector or public renting, we know that that is very constrained, um, but also that prices are very high. And that was a policy that was actually started by um, someone who's now back in government, um, whose famous expression, let housing benefit take the strain, Sir George Young, and boy, hasn't it done just that ever since. And mobility, along with affordability, does come back to supply. You can't really have good mobility if you haven't got sufficient um, units. And Councillor Tom talked about our fantastic um, development of 112 units. Wow, that's just huge, and that is really going to meet all our needs. Um, uh, and I don't think that's going to come anywhere near dealing with the kind of situations that Councillor Hogg very eloquently set out for us all. Um, and, uh, of course, then ran through the difficulties that people in this chamber themselves would experience difficulty on getting onto the housing ladder now in Wandsworth. And of course there are a lot of people out there who um, have got their properties and they may have paid off their mortgage and are sitting there in their private, uh, privately owned property, maybe not paying off a mortgage anymore. They might be under-occupying and there's been some very interesting coverage today about what we should be doing about that in the um, owner occupation sector, which I think is complete moonshine myself. But there's a lot of people there who've now got um, repair problems of their own and the private rented sector is where we find the worst disrepair of, of all. Uh, so what have the government and grant chaps brought forward to tackle these really difficult issues? Um, well, obviously, I suppose one way to um, help reduce prices is to increase